Welcome back to Jacksonville, the 60th Toyota Gator Bowl. Getting ready to start the third quarter. Florida State leads West Virginia 13 to 12. One of the reasons they lead is the fact that West Virginia has missed two extra points. And lo and behold, guess what's been happening here at halftime? They're still practicing. <laughs> West Virginia kickers, that's Andy Good, number 44, have been out practicing. And they came out about 10 minutes before the rest of the team to practice extra points and field goals. And, and from the looks of that yeah. last uh, attempt there, they, they still need, pulling them. Just need more practice. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson. All right, Tom, thanks so much. Uh, talked to Rich Rodriguez a few moments ago about his quarterback, Rasheed Marshall. He will start the second half, and I asked him in the first half, how much did the injury play into how much he changed the calls? He said we were a little bit conservative with Marshall in the first half because he was slow, so get so slow getting up from the field, so they had to check the tempo a little bit. Now, as for the field goals, you mentioned before Brad Cooper missing two field goals earlier, two extra points. Now, Andy Good will kick the field goals for West Virginia. Tom? All right, Lewis, actually, uh, Cooper missed one and then Good was brought on to try the next one, and he missed as well. And, uh, they didn't so, bring a third kicker. No, they, didn't. they had one. They would try it. So, um, in fact, it impacted the game because on what would have been a, a chip shot field goal, really, they attempted a fake, which was no good, and uh, settled for no points on a pretty good drive in that first half. That's Patea getting ready to tee it up for the Seminoles. And Jones and Rivers will be deep for West Virginia. Second half has generally belonged to the Seminoles. They start this second half with a one-point lead. Tayas kick. Pac-Man watching go through the end zone and out of bounds for the touchback. I think for Forrest, anytime he doesn't touch the ball on return. That's probably good news. He did, he did fumble that one in the first half, but he has been a dynamic return guy for the Mountaineers the last couple of years. So Rashid Marshall back on the field for the Mountaineers to direct their opening drive of the second half. You know, it, it sounds like an oxymoron to say they're kind of a controlled running team, but in spite of that, they make big plays. You know, they had a bunch of them the first half, 18 plays of 40 yards or more during the course of this season. From the I formation, this is K.J. Harris. K.J. could have used a block from Chris Henry, who was observing the play from downfield. That's a problem. So what a terrific block by Dan Moses, though. Dan Moses, number 76, their best offensive line in all Big East. A guy that really sprung K right there. I mean, he got off the ball right on. Look how he seals blocks, gets a block on a second guy, and then hustles all the way down the field. But the way they run their offense, they don't have to be have dominating blocks necessarily. And that was kind of a screen block, but a very good one by Dan Moses. So a successful start to the third quarter for the Mountaineers. He's going to pick up a first down on the run by Harris. Marshall pass deflected and intercepted. That's A.J. Nicholson, the linebacker, who deflected it and then picked it off. What an athletic play by Nicholson. I mean, first of all, it, it was just it, it, the ball was thrown so quickly. He, still, he got his hand up. I think his right hand up and tipped it up straight in the air. And then a diving catch. This his left hand, actually. And then like a center fielder. Well, the uh, junior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So it is athletic ability. And uh, a big turnover to start the second half here. And Florida State takes over with the ball resting on the West Virginia 44-yard line. You know, for years, Bobby Bowden, after a turnover, has come back and tried to throw, and to try to throw a deep ball. Instead, it's a handoff to Leon Washington. A you know, couple yard gain. We talked about Leon Washington. He only carried five times the first half, but believe it or not, they were for 135 yards and a 69 yard run and a 47 yard run. So only a sixth touch. And the guys we talked a little bit about in the first half, maybe give a few more chances. He was worn out. <laughs> he hadn't even gotten loose before he ran 69 yards. Second down. Rick's under pressure, let it go, incomplete, short hop, the intended receiver. 
Fancy Stovall. Again, for you know, those FSU fans that have watched Chris Ricks for years say that they're a lousy throw. There's a guy right in Chris Ricks's face, just could not follow through. After the play action fake, he was McLee, I think it was. Yes. Yeah. And see, so he just couldn't finish it, and he had a guy open, but just no chance to get get the ball downfield. Third down and eight. Rick stumbled, regains his balance, and lets it go complete. That was a heck of a throw by Chris Ricks. And you talk about throwing the ball early. It was one of those deep, deep comebacks that Florida State likes to run. They like to run either the go route, the deep route, and then the, the, the alternate route off that is they'll fake the go and then run a comeback at about 22 yards. And Thorpe did a great job of coming back to meet the ball. But Chris Ricks throws this ball before he's even broken. 23-yard gain. And first down, Florida State. Ricks with the fake, and for the end zone, overthrows the intended receiver, locked up over there. Incidental contact, no flag. Remember, they have to just catch it, too. That thing, yeah. Unless you were in the fourth you know, row of the stands, you had no chance of catching that one. I guess Stovall was closest to it. <laughs> It'll be second down. And 10 just inside the 20. Maybe changing the play. Little 10 seconds on the play clock. And to the tailback, Washington. Leon Washington dragging men with him. We got a shot of Bobby Bowden a moment ago. Just maybe realized that you know, during his tenure, Florida State had been 545 coaching changes at Division I A. As you watch the nice little run by Leon Washington. Good vision by by Leon has had two real long runs and some powerful runs as well and, and, and just at the University of Florida they just named their seventh head coach at the University of Florida since he's been at FSU third down and three for his Seminoles the up back Coleman Stop like, short of the first down. I, I've never liked that play where you don't have a lead blocker for a guy like that. They're just particularly on third and three. Just Jay Henry made a nice play for West Virginia to stop him. It's fourth down. So this, this is a long way to go. Three yards really for a fullback without a lead blocker. So Batea will attempt a 28-yard field goal. <laughs> Picks it up and through the uprights. Savi and Matia with the successful field goal. And off the th a recovered interception, they pad their lead by three. Buy the DVD for the new year today. Some material may be suitable for blah, 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 blah. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I'm full. Taco Bell's Big Bell Value Menu featuring the Grande Soft Taco with double the beef and big cheesy taste. To keep your stomach and your wallet full, think outside the bun. I want to return this duck. Why? It's very annoying. It just says the same thing over and over again. Go ahead, say it. Say it. Just one, say it. I just... Ah! What? 
What about him? If you're hurt and can't work, you get cash for bills, rent, food from Aflac. Huh? Okay. Aflac. If you're hurt and can't work, you this get is cash much for better. Bills. At least I learned something. It's been a long, cold winter, but the PGA Tour's Southern Swing is on its way. The Southern Swing, returning March 5th on NBC. The Toyota Gator Bowl is brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. And by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson. The Toyota Gator Bowl, the 60th edition, a matchup of eight and three teams. West Virginia from the Big East, Florida State from the ACC. And aerial coverage today, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tires. Dan Thomas piloting the airship today. Tom, you really look good. Your corduroy evening wear last night. Nice <laughs> <laughs> touch. <laughs> Corduroy's coming back, especially here in Florida. <laughs> Matias kick, and Pac-Man Jones takes it too deep to return. He'll take a knee, and they'll get it at the 20. Well, Bobby Bowden, 350 wins, puts him atop those in Division 1A. 350 victories. He eclipsed Joe Paterno, who's still going with 343. And some of the legendary names in college football, Bear Bryant, Pop Warner, and Amos Alonzo Stagg. Yeah, that's good company, isn't it? The best. 75 years old and no plans for retirement. And, and what a good guy. And still a great recruiter. I, I think, you know, many parents you know, really love Bobby Bowden. A.J. Harris gets five yards on first down. Tackled by Travis Johnson and A.J. Nicholson. West Virginia and it's no huddle offense up to the line of scrimmage. See which tempo they select. Yeah, they get the regular, the Indy, and the Jet. They've been running a lot of regular, did, ran a lot of the regular in the first half. Harris up to 96 yards rushing now, averaging six yards a carry. Here's a reverse. Chris Henry has a West Virginia first down. No, it's Jackson, excuse me. It's Eddie Jackson and not Chris Henry. Number six instead of number five. A gain of 12. Yeah, there's something you, you don't, don't see much is Jerome Carter missing a tackle. He's number 23 to strong safety right here. One of their surest tacklers, but Jackson just kind of shook him off and picked up the first down. Ni again, nice call, nice sequencing of plays. Some passing, some off-tackle runs, it runs screens, now a reverse. Ball at the 37-yard line. First down, West Virginia. This is Colson. Jason Colson got nearly 10 yards. Well, Jason Colson is listed as the third team tailback that had almost 700 yards rushing this year. He's going to return, and Pernell Williams has not played yet today. Who's a true freshman is going to return next year. So they're going to have some pretty good strength and depth at the running back position next year for the Mountaineers. Marshall looking to the sideline for the play call. Their regular tempo. Now waits for the checkoff. Play clock down to four. No problem. <laughs> and another nice run up the middle. I'm, I'm shocked, really. And here's a late flag. Colson with another nice run. And I'm really surprised that they've been able to run so successfully against the best rushing defense in college football. Well, I think because they've changed it up so much. There's a, you know, the, they've they run some inside stuff. They've run some traps. They've run some draws. Uh, the quarterback has run. After the play was ruled dead. Personal foul. Number 97 defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's Clifton Dixton, one of the defensive tackles for Florida State. 
Dixon That's upset good. as he goes to the sideline. He's a sophomore from Miami. Had a couple of sacks, two and a half this season, as a matter of fact. I, think, I believe that's the eighth penalty for Florida State today. So West Virginia trying to capitalize on that, continuing their drive now from the 30-yard line of the Seminoles. Colson gets the fake. Marshall has the ball. That's, the, that's Cameron Wimbley. Cameron Wimbley yeah. with the tackle of Rashid Marshall. See how fast these defensive ends. You know, Marshall is a pretty quick back. He's hit almost 2,000 yards rushing, and Wimbley defensive end just rushes him down. And again, you see what Florida State over the year, they rank number one at 69 yards. Today, 165 yards given up. Because the offensive line has done a good job, and they've mixed it up. Different types of runs. Already 100 yards over their normal average with 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Here's a loft for Henry. And it's batted down by Cromarty. Antonio Cromarty, perfect position, deflects the pass for Henry incomplete. We, we talked about Cromarty and what kind of player and potential that he has. He had a good year in the sophomore season, but at 6'3", 200 pounds, a good matchup with these big, tall receivers that you see out jumping defensive backs all over America every Saturday afternoon. But I like the way he looked back and located the football. Well, Marty makes the play, setting up a third down and long for Marshall and the Mountaineers. Marshall hit as he releases, and it's incomplete. Well, he had his, his backup quarterback, number 14, Charles Hales, yep. open. I think you have to go for it. Right? They're not going to try a field goal here. You saw Osei make the hit and lost his helmet in the process. Now... This is the dilemma. Andy right, Good is out in. to attempt the field goal, we assume. I've never seen two fake field goals in one game. <laughs> never. <laughs> Especially when the first one <laughs> failed dismally. Yeah. So I, I, I assume they're going to attempt this. So Good, number 44, will attempt one from 44. Bobby Bowden's teams have blocked 105 kicks during his tenure. Good, a 44-yard field goal attempt is up, and it is... But good. That's very good by Andy. Good. Right, that gives everybody confidence. Not just good as Rich Rodriguez and his teammates. Mountaineers finally get the kicking game right. And it pulls them back within one point. You're watching the Toyota Gator Bowl on NBC. That's right. It's the end of late fees at Blockbuster. Need an extra day or two with your movies and games? Go ahead. Take them. Enjoy more time and less stress. It's so beautiful. Thank you. The end of late fees. The start of more. The new Blockbuster. We have 170 kinds of beer from all over the world. Call me when you're ready. I'm ready. All the Sam Adams. Yeah. yeah. You can go around the world and not find a better beer than Samuel Adams. Always a good decision. NFL Street 2, rated E for everyone. EA Sports. Stronger denim. More comfortable. Relaxed fit. Wrangler 5-star premium quality denim. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. This is Betty. Betty knows flowers. And Betty knows that FTD helps keep her business flowing. Betty doesn't know that the Sprint Network connects FTD to 52,000 florists in 154 countries. Betty and florists around the world may never know about Sprint because their business is flowers. With Sprint, that business is global, connected, beautiful. Learn more at Sprint.com. Dateline Sunday, the millionaire and her lover, a fairy tale that ended in murder. Was her prince charming also her killer? 
Dateline Sunday, NBC 7, 6 Central. Lone sailboat on the water. We're in the Jacksonville area. Toyota Gator Bowl in the third quarter. 10-26 left. And Florida State leading West Virginia by one. 16-15. Mountaineers just kicked a 44-yard field goal by Andy Good. And now his fellow kicker, Brad Cooper, has it teed up to kick it off. And that's Leon Washington, joined deep by Pro Marty. Pro Marty tried to make a move, couldn't get away, stopped short of the 20-yard line. Flag is down way back upfield. Abraham Jones made the special teams play, but Mountaineers offside on the kickoff. Well, they had 12 penalties between them at halftime. Offside, 34. Kicking team, five yard penalty. Re kick. Jerry White was offside on special teams, so. Yeah, make him re-kick because you were stopped short of the 20-yard line. So make him kick off five yards further back. Chris Ricks biding his time before he gets back out on the field. Ricks uh, already has graduated. He graduated in December. He's already uh, planning to leave this game and head back to California to his home and prepare for the... NFL scouting combine. He said he's going to sign with an agent on Monday. And, uh, you know, he he may get a chance in, in the NFL because he's got, he really does have remarkable ability and an incredible arm. Now, it may not be easy for him in the NFL, but it certainly has not been easy for him here. And he may have to take a couple steps. He may have to go play in Europe, maybe even the AFL, before he gets a chance at the NFL. Brad Cooper has it teed up again, ready to re-kick for the Mountaineers. And it looks like it's going to be Willie Reed back deep with Washington instead of Cromarty. Cromarty with his long legs looked like Bambi in that last one, didn't he? <laughs> sort of ran like Bambi, too. He never made the 20-yard line. That's why he's back there. Cooper got into this one, didn't he? Yeah. Washington sees it bounce into the end zone. Brad Cooper with a touchback despite the five-yard penalty. You know, Chris Ricks has had, you know, as we said, a heck of another penalty, believe it or not. Uh, that up-and-down career at Florida State, that pretty good year last year as a quarterback of the Seminoles, at least in terms of numbers. Are these officials getting paid by the fly? Oh, I, I think so. Not to say that the infractions haven't occurred because in most cases that I've seen they After have. After the play it was ruled dead. Personal foul. Number 98. Receivers. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Alex Boston. Florida State. These needless penalties have to be so frustrating for the coaches. And, and for probably for your teammates too. Well, look at Chris Ricks' number from last year through 23 touchdowns in only two this year. That, to me, that's the, the most staggering difference. Now, only started four games, then was benched in favor of Wyatt Sexton, and then got the nod. They came in and played well in the second half against Florida in a loss their last game of the season, and got the nod in his final game as a Seminole today, the Gator Bowl. He starts here from the 10-yard line. Give to Booker. Maybe a yard. Lenort made the tackle for West Virginia. Lenort from Oil City, Pennsylvania, the senior, along with Ben Lynch, who also played at Oil City. You know, Tom, and I think as Bobby Bowden was talking about really looking at his offense, I really believe he does. As you look at really a lot of the top teams today, they are just spreading it out. Because teams are blitzing so much, it gives quarterbacks a little bit more time to see the blitz. It forces defenses to, con uh, to convey what they're going to do a little bit earlier, get you a better pre-snap look. And so he says he's going to really evaluate his style of offense this offseason. Creates a lot of exploitable angles, doesn't it, when you yeah. spread the field? When well, you look at Louisville, I was watching them uh, yesterday, what they've done, which is pretty remarkable, and, and Texas Tech throws it you know, right. 60 times a game by spreading it out. And, Mentioned uh, Oklahoma and USC were playing for a national championship game. They're spreading it out, too. 
Using three and four, sometimes five wide receivers in games. Stovall, after the catch, sets up a third down and about three. This is a crucial third down conversion for the Seminoles deep in their own territory. Blitz from West Virginia unloads quickly and complete. Dominic it. Robinson was hog collared by Jamil Adai, but did have the first down. Forward progress gives him the first and a crucial third down conversion by Chris Ricks and the Seminoles. Well, you know, they, they've been just awful on third down conversions this year. I think they rank absolute last in. The NCAA, boy, he did get hogtied. But that, that time, uh, Dominic Robinson did, did do things well, hold on to the ball, but also got past the yardage required for the first down. Spot the ball to 22, first down, Seminoles. Ricks rolls. Throws and complete to Chris Davis. Davis, the sophomore from St. Petersburg, with the grab. As they roll Chris Ricks to his right. Laurel and Mims, the tacklers. It'll be second down and short. Second down about three yards. This is kind of continuing the thought about Florida State's offense. You know, their, their tight end is in the game all the time. Really, between the two starting tight ends to this year, they only caught 12 passes. So it seems to be better served using another wide receiver most of the time. West Virginia showing a blitz here. And it's a run to Booker. Nearly broke free. And we'll have the first down. Lorenzo Booker, Lenort, with another tackle for the Mountaineers. Adam Lenort has had a terrific career for the Mountaineers. We said, he, well, he's now over 300 career tackles for West Virginia. Healthier now than he really has been in any part of the season. We talked to him yesterday, hurt his ankle very, very early in, in the season. And, and he's just been kind of limping around, making plays best he can. He and Ben Lynch, you said, at high school teammates, they've now played together nine straight years. Last year he had 135 tackles. An amazing number. Here's a fumble. Ricks picks it up. Get it. what he can out of it and ducks out of bounds. McLee and Lorello escort him out of bounds. You're talking to Chris Ricks. Uh, Yesterday, you see that ball just never came over with the nose tackle. I think Ben Lynch has kind of pushed his center right back into the exchange. But Chris Rick was Rick reminded me how this game is changing so much. He had a little DVD player where the the uh, coaching staff kind of downloads all the the oppose, uh, opposing defensive sets. They have blitzes and third down plays, and he watches a little DVD player on in his hotel room on planes. He had teammates coming by his room over the last couple of days to borrow his disc, his DVD, as, as well as his player to look at West Virginia's defense. Second down and 12, and another blitz from the Mountaineers. Picked up by Florida State, at least temporarily. The pass, pop! Chris Davis. Now, now they say... Yes, yeah, it is good. It is good. 14 yards. Can you tell me to whom Chris Ricks was taking this ball? <laughs> no. <laughs> he went out there to take it to his left. There was nobody there. But what a catch. A good throw by Ricks, but a great catch. Watch, there's nobody there to fake it to, right? Gets his hips turned and then just drills the ball. Good catch by Davis for a first down. Chris Ricks working on a streak of four in a row, counting this one thanks to the acrobatics of Chris Davis. First down, Seminole steadily advancing. The drive has started at their 10. Willie Reed makes the catch in the flat, turns out about six yards. When you think about Florida State's offense, too, you know, that was a quick pass, but they throw so many balls down the field, and that's why they don't, you know, their percentage completions is never, you know, over 60%, really, because they throw so many longer passes. Rick's looking over the West Virginia defense. And off to Washington. Leon Washington breaks to the outside, taken down as he penetrates the 40-yard line, down to about the 37. What's the block? Great block by Alex Barron, who's now playing the, the, the left side tackle here. Watch him here, number 70. Two-time All-American. And then watch Leon Washington get cut right off him. He just kind of... 
Washington blocks his guy out and allows uh, Leon Washington, hooks his guy in, allows Leon Washington to pop out for a big game. McCann on the tackle after 12 yards and a first down. Our first down line today sponsored by Toyota. Five minutes, 40 seconds. Third quarter, play action fake from Ricks. Going for the end zone and wide open third. And look at the recovery from Pac-Man. Yeah, it's one thing to be beaten, but the recovery speed and time is what Pac-Man Jones and every good corner has. Maybe the ball thrown a little bit late. Watch, he's, he's looking into quarterback the whole way, knows it's a deep ball, gets turned, there's the makeup speed. And, you know, almost the catch almost. by Jones. And if, if Thorpe can stop and then come back, maybe he takes it away from Adam Jones. Don't you think it should have been delivered a, a step or two earlier, though? Yes, absolutely. He was open for a good four or five yards. Toss to Booker. Trying to get a block on the corner. Can't get one. Got a couple of yards, not much more. Alex Barron, we've talked about him a little bit from Florida State, a two-time All-American at tackle, number 70. I mean, big athletic guy, great wingspan. See, first-team All-American for the second year in a row, Outland Trophy finalist. I think he's going to be a top uh, draft pick in the NFL. Talking to Jeff Bowden, he said, you know, we've had some great pass blockers around here over the years, but, but Alex Barron's been the best pass blocker over the last decade that we've had. Been that good. Two-time All-American, and that's significant at Florida State. We'll tell you what they do to honor those special players. And after this third down pass from Chris Ricks, an out pattern, and complete again to Thorpe. Profonzo Thorpe has made some clutch catches today. That one in front of McCann. And Alex Barron again doing a good job of pass protection. What he does best. 6'6", 308 pounds. Kind of stays with blocks. I guess he's going to make uh, some quarterback very, very happy next year. Pretty good run blocker down by the goal line and a pancake block by Alex Barron. And if, if you are back-to-back -back All-American at Florida State or win the Heisman Trophy, they seal your locker with plexiglass the way it was your last game. On a reverse, Ricks hands to Booker, and Booker stops on the goal line, down at the two-yard line. Chauncey Stovall with a nice block to help spring Lorenzo Booker. He's a bit shaken up after that tackle, a gain of 21 yards. Just like a hiccup, isn't he? I mean, the way he can accelerate and change direction. Good block by Stovall right there, who that has his man, man on the down. Ground, yeah. yeah. So Oops, both Thorpe, out of bounds. Thorpe and Stovall on the, on the outside have thrown some good blocks today. Stepped out of bounds after 16 yards. And now being attended to by the training staff over on the sideline. But Florida State will have it first and goal when we come back to Jacksonville. As we see, they've spotted the ball now around five or six yard line, I think. Booker is up. We'll take a break and be back in just a moment. Every 60 seconds, something cherished is lost. If only the right equipment were made available, such tragedies could be avoided. They say miracles happen every day. Well, when it comes to tying it down and keeping it down, that's what the all-new Toyota Tacoma's deck rail system is. A miracle. It may be the most important purchase you'll ever make. The 2005 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. The all-new Tacoma. Now that's moving you forward. those who never quit. The battery that never quits. Energizer. Keep going. They set up in the eye on this, the last play of the game. And here's the snap. Hand off to the tailback. Peterson tries the right side. Wow, what a hit. But he stays on his feet and he's broken to the outside and it's wide open. Touchdown. Give him a touchdown. Brown, 
keeps my customers in the loop. Used to be they didn't know when they'd get their sunglasses, so they'd call me. Now, with UPS, my customers get an email letting them know when their order is going to arrive. It's like I answer their questions, even before they ask. How'd you do that? I'm telepathic. Email notification for better customer service. UPS. What can Brown do for you? Create your own holiday feast at Red Lobster. Combine two or three of your seafood favorites from 11 signature dishes, including our tender snow crab. Turn a meal into a celebration at Red Lobster. instructions by email you won't be alone i'll guide your hand check your inbox you've got murder all new law and order criminal intent nbc sunday one point game at the gator bowl and florida state in the midst of its best sustained drive all day they began on their own 10 yard line they have the ball now first and goal at the west virginia seven Ricks throws it away. Blanket coverage of fourth by the West Virginia secondary. Yeah, just, you know, a two-man route, really. Tight end stays in and blocks. And, uh, you know, they're just easy to double cover both outside guys. Jeff Bowden, the offensive coordinator, right here. Seven for Chris Ricks, senior quarterback from Santa Margarita, California. He's going to hand it to Washington. Nowhere to go. Flag is down. Florida State has hurt itself with penalties in the red zone today a couple of times. This could be another. Well, it's either the ninth or tenth penalty they've had today. And they came in to this game, as we saw earlier, you know, ranked very, very poorly in terms of penalties per game. It's a hole. Holding. 35. Offense. 10 yards. Line of scrimmage. Replay. Second down. That's B.J. Dean, the fullback. So the ball now back at the 17-yard line. Second down and goal. You know, here's the situation again. I think where you, you should take a tight end out. They've only thrown 12 balls to tight end all year. You need to get the ball into the end zone, and yet the tight end remains in. Thorpe is coming in from the sideline with the play. They're going to get, a, get some good double teams on these outside receivers, West Virginia. A running play to Washington. It'll be third down. Well, maybe Coach Bell's just trying to think about making it a four-point game, right? I still think, you know, it's the third quarter, you throw the ball in the end zone. Give yourself a chance. West Virginia's see. dynamic enough. I don't see, yeah, why not? And they have, this is a third down play. But you see how bad they've been. They are 22%. It is absolutely the worst in college football. Five of 12 today. Third and goal, 14-yard line. Blitz comes. Ricks hangs it up for Thorpe. Oh. And he won the oh. jump ball. Trafonzo Thorpe. Oh, what a great play. Six foot two over the six foot D McCann. And, and perfectly, you know, timed on the jump. And this is, I don't know, maybe the third or fourth time we talked about it. That underthrown deep ball. And this is part of the game plan. They practice this. this is just what they do. Give your athletes a chance. And that's exactly what Thorpe did. You know, uh, Man, uh, McCann is, is 5'11". He's got a three-inch advantage on him. And boy, can he leap and jump. Wow. 14-yard touchdown strike from Chris Ricks to Crafonzo Thorpe. The key of the extra point is good. 
Thorpe with five catches for 73 yards and a score today. Well, he's had over 2,000 yards in career receptions. Injured most of this year. A great year a season ago and playing pretty doggone well today. Chris Ricks, final game as a Seminole. Pitches a touchdown pass to Grafonzo Thorpe. You're watching the Toyota Gator Bowl on NBC. Where does reality end and pure vision begin? It all starts with a Pioneer Plasma display. The purest color, the purest experience. Pure vision. Only from Pioneer. No matter what the sport, anytime athletes sweat, they lose more than just water. Gatorade puts back the sodium, potassium, and carbs all athletes need to perform at their best. Water does not. Focus. Discipline. Hard work. At American Century Investments, these are the values that guide our investment teams. And no matter what the market conditions may be, our teams stick to their game plan. Because we believe that's the best way to achieve a winning performance. American Century Investments. Genuine results. I ran the 800. I studied mechanical engineering and industrial design. I was a conference champion. I graduated with a GPA of 3.2. It took hard work, discipline, and stamina. And believe me, I rely on those things every day raising my daughter. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us are going pro in something other than sports. Bon Jovi! Elway. What you doing in Vegas, little buddy? We're gonna be here for the Arena Bowl this June. You're dreaming. Why don't we settle this thing right now? Go for it. The drive to Arena Bowl 19 Las Vegas begins Sunday, January 30th, when the AFL returns to NBC. Hit me. Florida State goes up 23-15 on West Virginia with 305 left in the third quarter. And the Seminoles ready to kick it off. Batia will kick it deep to Jones and Rivers. The last two kicks were unreturnable. And Pac-Man Jones takes it at the goal line with a burst of speed. Jones, nice return, almost the 40-yard line. Roger Williams on special teams. And uh, during that last drive, Bobby Bowden was, actually before that last drive, Bobby Bowden was speaking with his quarterback, Chris Ricks. 40, Toyota Chris, where's it, Ben Jim Ricks at? Where's Ricks? Where's Ricks? Where's Ricks? Chris, you remember 60 goal line? Yeah. Well, we gonna we might run that down on that goal line. Go on that goal line. Cause we run a slant, they just jump all over it. Just sit on it. You sit and hold it until it's time to throw it. <laughs> that wasn't the player they scored the touchdown on, but Bobby Bowden still coaching at 75 years old, talking to his quarterback. Rich, by the way, who started the game eight of 20, has hit eight of his last 10. There's K.J. Harris on a West Virginia run, tackled after a gain of two by A.J. Nicholson. I tell you, Coach Bowden is right, though. They are, West Virginia is jumping those slant routes, and he was saying, hey, let's fake the slant and run a little smash route out. They call it a garnet. 60 garnet is their call for it. You fake the slant, and you come right back outside. I would be surprised to see him run it down by the goal line next time they're down there. Marshall throws on the run and throws a strike. Caught by Chris Henry. A little face mask, I think, too. The flag went down. Flag is down. Nicholson hit him. Henry with a nice run after the catch. 
West Virginia's done a good job of mixing the run and pass today. Yeah, and I think the kinds of runs and the, the design of their, of their passing game, too. I mean, there's been a really good sequencing of plays. Illegal formation. Nope. Six men. Line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Replay. First down. So the penalty against West Virginia costs them a first down. Surprising, though, the way that they have been able to run. <laughs> They've been able to run against Florida State. I continue to be uh, shocked at that. They're averaging right at six yards a carry. And it's not with big runs added in like Florida State. They've been steady all day at that pace. And only, they only had one runner, individual runner, run for over 100 yards against them this year. That was a Florida runner. And K.J. Harris has done it today. K.J. Harris gets the call there. Buster Davis and A.J. Nicholson on the stop. Harrison has carried 18 times now for 104 yards. And for an injury report, let's check in with Lewis. All right, Tom. Well, the x-ray room here at All Tell Stadium has been pretty busy this afternoon. For Florida State, Chauncey Davis, their left end, was in, had an x-ray on his right shin. The x-ray was negative. He's padded and taped up, good to go. But for West Virginia, their safety, Mike Lorello, had his left arm x-ray. He's fra is fractured, and he is out. Tom? All right, Lewis, so Lorello out for West Virginia. He's had a good game, Mike Lorello has. Marshall, scrambling. Still on his feet and twisting his way down inside the 40-yard line. I don't think that was a planned draw. I think he just took off. Well, I don't know. I saw Chris Henry downfield making a pretty good block. So it may have been a, it may have been a, a draw play. But good block here. And then Chris Henry right here. And he slips right in behind him. I guess you're right since he was downfield blocking. He goes in any event for 19 yards, planned or not planned. Yeah. It was a good play. But it's only, I think, the third designed cold run for Rashid Marshall today. He's run eight times, 56 yards. Here's K.J. Harris who's had the big day, and he rips off another huge chunk of rushing yardage. But, you know, it's, it's the design. You, you quarterback up the middle, then you run the, the perimeter outside, you run a trap, then maybe you draw, you throw a couple of passes. They're just not trying to kind of pound it right at Florida State, which they knew they couldn't do it. So it's been a great design by Rich Rodriguez and then terrific execution. Six or 13 yards on that carry as Harris is averaging over six yards a tote. And Marshall, eight carries, 56 yards. He's averaging seven yards a carry. This K.J. Harris, the big afternoon. Few would have predicted that he would be able to run for that many yards in the third quarter against the Florida State defense. There's more what you're used to seeing when people yeah. try to run against the Seminoles as Colson has stopped in his tracks. You talk about stuffing a trap play. I mean, Dan Moses, the left guard for West Virginia, who's had a real nice ball game, just got stuffed as he pulled and tried to trap a defender for Florida State, make a, a little hole for the running back. Inside 20 seconds and counting in the third quarter. He looks for the sideline again for the audible. He calls the audible called by Rich Rodriguez. It's a pass and complete to Colson. Out of bounds just short of the first down with a flag flying in. A.J. Nicholson forced him out. You know, it's a little, un a little unconventional to have the coaches call the audibles from the sidelines, but boy, it certainly has worked for West Virginia over the last few years. You're talking about styles of offense. I wonder that more teams don't adopt something similar to this. Five-yard face pass. Defense. Five yards from the end of the run. The penalty will result in a first down. That play ended the third quarter. Well, there's nothing left for me to say. <laughs> RG said it all. <laughs> say Happy New Year. 2315 <laughs> Knowles back after these messages from your local NBC station. NBC Monday. <laughs> Start the new year with an all-new Fear Factor Couples, the series. <laughs> Eight couples, one million dollars. <laughs> And at only Las Vegas with guest star Sylvester Stallone. How you doing, old friend? And her performance by Duran Duran. Then... <gasps> the sister saw everything. The dead sister. The premiere of Medium. All new Fear Factor couples, Las Vegas, and the premiere of Medium. NBC Monday.
Introducing the all-new compact Mercury Mariner with intelligent four-wheel drive and V6 power. Mariner is everything you want in a compact SUV. Smartly equipped, surprisingly affordable. Come see the Mercury Mariner now during the Wishlist sales event at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. The Chevy Holiday Red Tag C. Look for a red tag on Impala and you'll save a lot of green. With Chevy Impala Sedan, you get best-in-class highway fuel economy. And now qualified lessees can use red tag bonus cash to lease an 05 Impala Sedan for around $199 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for important lease details. The Chevy Holiday Red Tag Save. See red, save green. See your Chevy Network dealers today. Official vehicle of the Cleveland Browns. Come on, guys. Can we please have the cooler? Uh, you can have the cooler if you switch. That's not what I meant. Does it matter? I don't know why they wanted that empty cooler anyway. Blue sky, sunlight, blue light. E.T. Weeknights at 7.30 on Channel 3. One time Florida State led 10-0 very early in the game. West Virginia came back and they played on basically even terms since. It's 23-15 Seminoles with West Virginia threatening. Well, thankfully, too, they'll have to go for a two-point play to tie the game, right? <laughs> Missed two extra points. Two extra point misses. Although Andy Good made a nice field goal. Yeah, he did. 44 yards. Yeah. Third quarter stats. One, you know, there's been uh, also 18 penalties between the two teams. One of those stats you always like to see. 171 yards in penalties today. the third period. Remember I said that RG said it all? <laughs> he didn't. He forgot one thing, didn't he? <laughs> this is an extension of the third period. Can't end on a penalty against the defense. So the, a last untimed play in the third quarter. It's a handoff to K.J. Harris, who is thrown back by Nicholson. Well, K.J. wish we were the fourth quarter, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. we had much more success. <laughs> so now they'll switch into the field uh, to begin the fourth quarter. As the third quarter ends just the way we thought it did a few moments ago. 23-15. Well, you know, Rashid Marshall battling an injury. We said at the very, you see him holding at those left ribs. He Perfect, is still yeah. hurting, man. Weren't sure he was going to start. Weren't sure how long he could play, how well he could play. Well, he's played pretty doggone well. Still taking some duress. He's taking some hits. Good throw there to Chris Henry. He's run the ball effectively as well. He's led his team particularly well. One of those guys that has just great charisma on and off the field. Courageous performance by the senior from Pittsburgh. Brashear High School there who has been invited to the NFL Combine as a wide receiver. We talked to Rod, uh, Rich Rodriguez about him and saying, you know, he has been consistently good in every single game we've played this year. And I think he'd say that about today's performance as well. He's completing 61% of his passes this year. Tom, last year was only 45%. So, I mean, he has made dramatic improvement this year, and that's why he's the Big East Offensive Player of the Year. First play of the fourth quarter, second down, and a run by Purnell Williams. Williams, the freshman from New Lebanon, Ohio, a true freshman out of Dayton Jefferson High School, all stater there and highly touted. 3,800 career rushing yards. I think Purnell Williams, I've watched some tape of West Virginia the last couple of weeks. This guy's going to have, if he stays healthy, a really good career there as a running back in this offense in particular. Hurry up on third down. And Marshall's pass on the run, too low and incomplete. He could have run for a good distance, it appeared. But Joe Hunter was the intended receiver, and the pass short hopped him incomplete. Well, well fourth and ten, I think you have to send in Andy Good, the kicker. Yeah. And Good, indeed, does trot onto the field. 
You know, it's kind of, when you play against Florida State, it's like playing against Virginia Tech, though. You always worry about those block kicks. At least I, I would. I mean, I mentioned earlier they blocked 105 kicks during Bobby Bowden's tenure at Florida State. And these guys are coming. Field goal attempt from 35 yards. And he squeaks it through. So after a missed extra point, Andy Good has redeemed himself with a pair of field goals. It narrows the Florida State lead now 23-18. It's big, it's here, and it's better than ever. Toyota Thon 05. This huge year end event is on. And with a big selection and great values on Toyota's most versatile SUVs, it's as good as it gets. Don't miss the smooth riding Highlander, which has an awesome 27 miles per gallon rating. Or drive away in the adventurous 4Runner. IntelliChoice named it an excellent value. Toyota Thon 05. Quality, selection, value. Now that's moving you forward. Katie was sure of her cholesterol plan. She took medication, she ate right and ran. Yet it wasn't enough to get bad cholesterol low. What's this? I'm still here in the land of no. Switch to Crestor, her doctor said. You're not to blame. All cholesterol drugs simply aren't the same. When Crestor performed in a head-to-head -head test, its lowering effect was clearly the best. Crestor's proven effective, that's well understood. Would you like to try it? Why, yes. Yes, I would. Ask your doctor about Crestor. Crestor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of serious side effects. Since Katie switched to Crestor, her cholesterol's much less. With Crestor and diet, it's the land of success. Get your free trial today, and you just might declare, I'm a Crestor success. Now you're getting somewhere. Early in the fourth quarter, 60th Toyota Gator Bowl. Florida State leading 23-18 after West Virginia just kicked a field goal. And the Mountaineers will kick it back to the Seminoles. Florida State came in as a little more than a touchdown favorite. Florida State led 10-0. West Virginia came back, took the lead briefly by a couple of points. And still anybody's game here early in the fourth quarter. That's Brad Cooper, number 12, to kick off for West Virginia. Cromarty and Reed are the deep men for the Seminoles. Cooper boots it, and Reed trying to chase it down, crosses the goal line. For the touchback, Florida State will begin from its own 20-yard line. The Toyota Gator Bowl brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's moving forward. And by Crestor. Visit Crestor.com and ask your doctor if Crestor is right for you. Today's aerial coverage, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tires. Is that on a track? It looks like it is. Yeah. It looked like it was right in that uh, wire there. But not so. Always glad to see the Goodyear blimp. You know it's a big event when you see the blimp overhead. First down pass from Chris Ricks. Finds its mark. And a nice move to get free for the first down from Chris Davis. It's a gain of 17 yards. Jamil Adai makes the tackle for West Virginia. You know, Chris Ricks only threw for 54 yards in the first half, but he's over 100 yards in the second half and has thrown for a touchdown as well. But what you like about Chris Davis after the sketch is what he did after it. I mean, that's going to be an eight or nine yard gain. A real quick move avoids the uh, Adam Jones tackle. Picks up about 16 yards. Both quarterbacks playing pretty well here in the second half minute into the fourth quarter run by Washington and Washington down the sideline flag is down and Washington bumped out of bounds at the 25 yard line well, there's another flag for the late hit out of bounds that was Pac-Man Jones with a late hit it's a 36 yard run what a rough day for Pac-Man Jones yeah. boy not smart yeah 
Hey, Lee in Washington has gotten to full speed and about three steps in these on these three long runs yeah. that we've uh, we looked at. For a power back. Yeah, exactly. Boy. He's got quick acceleration. Jeff Bowden said to me this week, he's our most valuable player as far as he was concerned. Thirty-six yard run by Washington if it counts. There are two fouls on the play. A live ball foul and a dead ball foul. Holding. Number one. Offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. After the play was ruled dead. Personal foul. Late hit. Number nine. Defense. Fifteen yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, uh, you know, the first was the hold by Thorpe, the, the wide receiver down here. They would call the hold on him there. Didn't look terribly bad to me, but they, they call the holding penalty there. Then late, there's Pac-Man Jones. Hits him, you know, six yards out of uh, the field of play. So yeah. after all that, the ball is at the West Virginia 39-yard line. Look at the penalties. 20. Yikes. This is Booker on first down. About a five-yard gain for Lorenzo. Never get a break defending the running backs of Florida State. Washington goes out. Booker comes in. And the quarterbacks. Only. This is second half yeah, comparisons. And Chris Ricks really on fire this second half. 10 of 14, 103 yards in the touchdown. Really threw a couple of balls away. And we've talked about Rasheed Marshall still in pain with it, bruised ribs and sternum. Booker using his blockers. Tries to put on a move and a flag is in. Just let me know when there's not a flag on place, would you? Sorry. Just say no flag, okay? <laughs> Chris Ricks back up field with his arms outstretched like, what now? <laughs> Number 33 defense. 15 yards. Correction. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Scott Jerko. He's got Jerko, one of those um, one of those guys who've been a great story for West Virginia. You know, grew up in Morgantown, watched him as a kid, walked on to the team, then played special teams, then got a scholarship. And now it's been a two-year starter and a very productive two-year starter. Seminoles advance to the 11-yard line of West Virginia. First down. High formation in the backfield. Booker the tailback. Dean is the fullback. Booker had a head of steam by the time he hit the line of scrimmage. And it stopped at the six-yard line by Adam Lenort. Yeah, Lorenzo Booker, you watch him, you know, one-step boom. He is at full speed. That's why, you know, you just give him a little bit of a crease, he's going to be, you get a positive play. Washington back in now, I believe. There he is. Booker's gained 79 yards, as you see. Second down and five. Florida State's looked much better offensively here in the second half. A couple times they've been in the red zone and stalled. Well, that was Washington doing his best Booker imitation as he yeah, yeah. danced his way toward the line of scrimmage. And then, and then he had a little power at the end. They, yeah. they can get a first down here, right, Tom? They so, can, and yeah. they may have. It is a first down, I believe. Yeah, I think they're going to measure now. I guess they will measure. Yeah. 
And they gave the first, yes, Lenort limping off the field. Adam Lenort for West Virginia. So they have called it a first down. First and goal now for Florida State. Mark Magro, redshirt freshman from Morgantown, replacing Lenort at the linebacker spot. From the one-yard line, first and goal. We've seen two guys come in and, and three guys go off. Now two guys, okay. <laughs> we got it right. Math all works for West Virginia. an interesting run and climb, wasn't it? He didn't run in, he climbed in. Scaling the heights <laughs> for the touchdown. Yeah, 245-pound fullback. Watch, he gets stuffed there in about the two, keeps it churning, keeps it jumping, and then just kind of climbs and slides over his knee. It still hasn't hit. Never did. Number 48, Chris Hall, the hold. The extra point. Metea, the extra point attempt. It is dead center. As the Seminoles start to take command now with 11-12 left in the fourth quarter. Florida State up 30 to 18. What's that? Oh, it's a duvet cover. A what? A duvet cover. It's a decorative sham that also protects. <laughs> Watch the game. The double quarter pound with cheese. Pound one. Oh! Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. What, what, what? It's a throw pillow. Scent is the strongest sense tied to memory. How will you be remembered? Introducing Red Zone Body Spray in four great scents that all last longer than the leading body spray. He's so great. Red Zone Body Spray. Spice things up all day, all night. You can also smell great with Red Zone Invisible Solid and Body Wash. Love this spot. Pop? Yes, yeah, sir. There's something I gotta tell you. What? I've got unbeerman-like conduct on Timmy, giving Dad a beer with less taste. That's a loss of respect. Inheritance, decline. Replacing with great-tasting, less-filling Miller Lite. Half the carb is Bud Light. We've also got unoriginal tattoo on Timmy, tribal armband design, Everybody's attempting to fit in. Play beer. Miller. Good call. We should do this more often. Oh, great, the game's on. Everyone loves the great crunchy taste of Tostitos Scoops. And with the bite-sized bowl shape, you get the perfect dip every time. How's our defense? Like you're a lucky man. So I wouldn't go cry. Tostitos, share something good. Brian Boitano, Christy Yamaguchi, plus American Idol finalist Diana DeGarmo and special guest Carly Patterson. Brian Boitano Skating Spectacular, coming up next on NBC. Florida State scoring to go ahead 30 to 18. Now ready to kick off. Maytia kicking. And Pac-Man Jones takes it. With some momentum as he struggles forward to the 30-yard line where the Mountaineers take over. Bobby Bowden's team now starting to really assume superiority here in the fourth quarter. And of course, you couldn't be a coach for as long as he has without good support at home. And right now, Lewis Johnson is with Bobby's better half hand. That's right, Tom. You know, next to every great man, you'll usually find a great lady. And for 55 years, Ann, by, Ann has been by Bobby's side. And it all started, Ann, back in West Virginia. You had six kids, and Bobby was coaching. What do you remember about those days? Well, they were happy days because our family was all together. And, you know, it was the beginning of the beginning for us. And we love West Virginia. I've got some great friends up there still. And I want to say hi to the Hortons. 
up there. <laughs> We're very good friends of ours. Hey, what do you remember about 1974? Because things got a little dicey. You had some for sale signs in your yard. What did you learn about the business there, the business of football? Well, you know, I really it never really bothered me because I didn't I never saw the for sale sign. I didn't even see him. He had him out before you saw him. Huh? Yeah, and I didn't <laughs> see him hanging in effigy. You know, I didn't see any of that. And I don't know. I don't remember it being a bother to me. Now, Coach is 75. How long does he have the green light from you to keep coaching? As long as he keeps winning. Okay. <laughs> as long as he keeps winning. Ha Happy New Year to you and all the family. Well, Thank you so much. Let's hope it game stays in this direction. All right, good luck. Good luck to you. Tom? All right, Lewis, even pressure from <laughs> even pressure from the wife. He can keep coaching as long as he keeps winning. Whoa. She's with him winter tie, right? He's not even on the ties. Oh boy. KJ Harris with a couple of nice runs for West Virginia. They need some points here. Swing pass to Eddie Jackson. Draws a gang of white-shirted Seminoles and thrown back just short of midfield. Roger Williams first to get there. Family full of coaches, isn't it, Tom? It is. Amazing coaching family, the Bowden family. As Coach Rich Rodriguez of West Virginia knows, he worked for Tommy. The patriarch, of course, is Bobby. Ooh, I like the nice music. There's Tommy. Jeff is the current FSU offensive coordinator. And, of course, Terry formerly coached. And now a commentator. Impressive football credentials. Here's a quarterback draw from Marshall. I don't think he quite made the first down unless they give him that bounce. Marcelo Church. The stop. There's Jeff Bowden upstairs, the offensive coordinator of the Seminoles. You yeah, remember he was talking to us uh, last week about growing up in Morgantown. Really went from kindergarten through high school. At, uh, in, in Morgantown, I remember playing, you know, underneath the stadiums. Right, and like his mom, has wonderful memories of uh, Morgantown. Just to deliver the morning paper route he was talking about before school. And missed a few days of school, and his dad took him out on the recruiting trips. The recruiting trips. That was the measurement for the first down. It is a first down. You know, Jeff Bowden really has been under a lot of cr uh, criticism and pressure. And Bobby Bowden has said publicly, you know, every coach has to go through it. I went through it at West Virginia. They wanted to fire me in 1974. And they said, you know, you, you, it's got to toughen you up. He'll be a better coach for it. But he also said, hey, we're going to re-look at our entire offensive scheme this offseason. Bobby said after that tough year of 74, he learned that, you know, they're not going to cut you any slack. You don't owe them anything. If a better job comes along, and it did at Florida State, take it. And that's exactly what happened when he left Morgantown. You know, he's an incredibly loyal guy, too. You know, he's been at Florida State a long, long time, had a lot of other opportunities to go back to some places, including his, his alma mater and uh, Alabama. And, you know, he's only fired three coaches, I think, his entire head coaching career. He was a uh, of course, he spent a semester in Tuscaloosa at the University of Alabama, and then that was the team he followed, of course, growing up in Birmingham. He wound up going to coach, well, played at Howard, which is now Samford, and later coached Samford before going to West Virginia. Flags are down. That's Bryant McFadden, the Florida State cornerback. He, uh, he, had a, he had a good year, too, for the Seminoles. Second team, all, C, uh, all ACC. Really good student as well, art major. McFadden has not a lot of touchdown pass the last two years. Isn't that incredible? All the great passers they play against. And as McFadden leaves the field, we'll take a break. We'll be back. The Toyota Gator Bowl on NBC. To go the distance in life, it takes persistence, performance, and strength. The same qualities that have made Pacific Life one of the largest life insurance companies in the nation. With Pacific Life by your side, there's no limit to what you can accomplish. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Proud sponsor of the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. 
How did this happen? I, I don't know what... You're a moron. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. It's like talking to a wall. A wall and a big brown sweater. A big... What? Buying tires is a big decision. Next time, get everything you want. Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. If you want to do more with a room and a budget, you can. Because the Home Depot is driving down the cost of home improvement. We're making more projects possible for more people. Every year, we permanently reduce the price on thousands of items, more than 5,000 this year alone. Whether it's our low price guarantee or associates with a knack for making your projects more affordable, we're helping your hard-earned dollars work even harder. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. form and function just became razor thin. The Motorola Razor, only from the new Singular. The new Singular, raising the bar. NBC Sunday on an all-new Crossing Jordan. This is a big one, guys. A massacre in a diner. It wasn't any robbery. So what, then? Random mayhem? Six victims and one missing survivor. What have we stumbled onto here? Who may be the only witness or the killer. All new Crossing Jordan, NBC Sunday. Ticking down toward the nine minute mark in the Toyota Gator Bowl, 30 to 18. West Virginia with a give to KJ Harris. A couple of nice moves. And then the pursuit of the defense gets him led by Jerome Carter. And we remind you coming up next on NBC, Aflac presents the Brian Boitano Skating Spectacular. Special guests Christy Yamaguchi and Carly Patterson. That's coming up next here on NBC. Christy Yamaguchi, one of my favorite skaters of all time. Well, you've there. seen some pretty good ones. Yeah. Well, a critical third down for West Virginia right now. Rashid Marshall on third down from the shotgun. Three wide receiver set. Marshall. Dodge the rush, there's a flag down. Marshall also goes down late. Someone wrapped around his leg. Jason Colson was the intended receiver. Personal foul face mask against Florida State. He's going to bail West Virginia out. Now down by 12 points and a third and eight. You needed some help and they got, oh yeah, clearly. Yep. Personal yeah. foul, face mask. Defense, 15 yards, automatic, first down. So the drive kept alive by the face mask penalty. You know how they have that three speeds of offense. You know, we talked about regular speed and then Indy and then Jet. Jet is their fastest paced offense. You know, down by 12, eight, little over eight minutes left to go. They're going to have to run a lot more of that Jet type of uh, tempo. I think to get back in the ball game. 126 yards of penalties against the Seminoles. And they're ahead. <laughs> Keep by Marshall after the fake. Nothing there. Might have lost a yard. Courageous performance today, though, by Rashid Marshall. You could tell the ribs were obviously bothering him. It does that every yeah, time he gets up. Yeah, absolutely. And what a you know, bright, engaging guy. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday. Uh, kind of lit up the room when he came in. And, and we talked about his career, 24 career rushing touchdowns, nearly 2,000 yards rushing, thrown for 18 TDs this year. Nearly 8,000 yards total offense. Reverse. Florida State was ready for it. And Broderick Bunkley just Bunkley. stayed right there. Stayed at home and made the play. They, they really move a lot of guys around. This is Bunkley staying at home here. He's kind of had an outside uh, move. Eddie Jackson never had a chance, did he? None whatsoever. That's a nose tackle staying at home. Marshall with all day directing a little traffic. Now he's going to be chased. <laughs> 
Sims was chasing him down. He's going to chase most guys down, Eddie, Ernie Sims. Ernie Sims, we talked about, you know, what, what a big career he has ahead of him. He's had a great year this year, only a sophomore, plays on all the special teams. We talked about him being the, their leading tackler. Also owns a, a bunch of a pets that we talked about. Bizarre pets wants to be a vet eventually, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Wants to be a vet. Actually, yeah. uh, there's part of his family. He spent uh, this off season as a uh, in, in a animal hospital. But he's got four dogs, two anacondas, uh, a boa constrictor, a tarantula. That's enough, isn't it? Yeah, the tarantula yeah. was the first. His mom, Alice, nearly fainted when he <laughs> found out her son had got a tarantula while she was gone. His mom, Alice, ran track at Florida State, and his dad, Ernie Jr., played for Bowden at FSU. Fourth and forever. Not Marshall right. throws underneath to Harris. No chance. And the Florida State defense laying in wait for him with McFadden and Sims. You know, as good as, and smart as Rasheed Marshall has played all day, that's one you got to throw downfield on fourth and about 15 and give, uh, you know, Chris Henry or somebody a chance to go up and get it. That's just not going to ever get your first down. So on the failed fourth down conversion, Florida State will take over and 6.51 on the clock. There's Travis Johnson. Didn't want to be a number one draft pick. Well, Adrian Peterson made a strong run at the Heisman Trophy in his freshman year for Oklahoma. But before he was famous as a college player, he took the field in last year's U.S. Army All-American Bowl. So who will be this year's breakout star? Tune in and find out. U.S. Army All-American Bowl, Saturday, January 15th at 1 Eastern, only on NBC. Yeah, I remember Chris Leak the year before, and then played as a freshman at Florida. Some pretty good quarterbacks this year playing in that game. Greg Paulus at Syracuse, New York. Brian Pierlou, Pierlou is probably the number one recruit in the entire country. Counted for 69 touchdowns this year. Mark Sanchez will be playing as well out of Southern California. Bella Peterson, number two yeah. of the Heisman Trophy voting. Just a freshman. incredible year. Meanwhile, uh, offense for Florida State finally found its stride. They've been clicking in the second half, averaging about seven yards per play. 30 plays, 203 yards, and some long drives in there. 90 yards, 80 yards. Like a face mask. Here comes the flag. What would, it, what would a play be without a flag? <laughs> Lawrence Odina was the man. Well, as Bobby Bowden looks ahead to next season. Personal foul. Face mask. 47. Defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. His 30th at Florida State. You know, he's, he'll lose Chris Rich, Wyatt Sexton, who played a lot this year. Only a sophomore will be back. He's got some young fre uh, red shirts, freshmen, I believe, as, as returning as quarterbacks as well. And then Leon Washington and Lorenzo Booker both back. And, uh, you know, defensively, they're going to be yeah, strong again. Yeah, turnover on the defense, they should be strong. Yeah, they're going to, you know, anytime you start with Ernie Sims on defense, it's a good place right. to start. Antonio Cromarty. Under six minutes, Florida State with the ball at the 40-yard line of West Virginia. First down for the Seminoles. Booker dancing to the outside. Florida State inbounds, right? Did not. You know, Lorenzo Booker is one of those guys, because he did it actually in high school in Southern California. You, you think, or he thinks, he's going to go the distance every single, every single time he touches the ball. And... Uh, you don't want to discourage that often, but sometimes, well, as the coach said, he dances a little too much. Well, why not? Would you think you're going to score every time? He practically did that in high school, California Player of the Year. <laughs> yeah. We, With a record number of uh, 8,500 8, yards mm -hmm. he gained in high school, 137 touchdowns. Yeah. Why wouldn't you think you'd go all the way on every play? <laughs> well, you're right. He did. Up in Ventura, California, everybody recruiting him. That's the on the all-freshman team, the ACC all-freshman team a year ago. A little reverse action here to Chris Davis. Bodies flying all over the field, and Davis has a first down. Bumped out of bounds by Pac-Man Jones. And Chris Davis, one of those guys coming back, and he's played pretty well today. Yep. Good after the catch. You see what a kind of runner that Chris Davis is. 
This was well set up. Everybody is kind of bunched up there on defense. A really good, good job by Florida State offensive players who didn't clip. They, they thought about blocking somebody. They backed off and allowed Chris Davis to pick up the first. Well, it looks like the uh, Gator Bowl streaks for these two teams will continue. Florida State would remain unbeaten in the Gator Bowl if they go to 5-0-1. Should this lead hold up? West Virginia will go to 0-5. Beyond Washington. There you saw the power. And we saw the speed of, what, at least three times today, and we've seen the power a lot, including this one. Again, a reason for Seminole fans to be optimistic. He returns next year. Kind of a hop, a skip. Didn't quite jump, but... He kind of ran through about three West Virginia defenders. What a, what a great day for Leon Washington. It began early on the second play from scrimmage when he scampered a Gator Bowl record 69 yards for the touchdown. 195 yards. And just 12 rushes. Ricks fakes. He didn't see the blind side the problem, and it's intercepted. Now, intercepted by McCann. With a 12-point lead, 425 remaining in the game, and on first down, tell me why you throw that ball. Tell me why you throw that one on first down. I'm still thinking. Okay. Let me know, okay? After commercial, I want you to go back to me. <laughs> Tom will have extra time to think <laughs> as we take a break <laughs> after the interception in the end zone. Mountaineer ball when we return. What will you do with the roomy Toyota Tundra Double Cab? I'm going to take my family on vacation. I'm going to go bowling with the guys. You know, I think I'll take my father-in-law camping. With a roomy interior, you can do more. Tundra Double Cab. Now that's moving you forward. Hey, Chubbs, first day? Yeah. No. The answer's always no. You got that Quasimono? Now, I'm a caller. Hi, can I redeem my credit card, Miles? No. That's right. Mix it up. Tic Tac, no. E I E I, no. Marco! P pull no. All right, are we clear? Yeah. No. Hey, shouldn't I just call Capital One? Hey. Yeah. I Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There's no blackout dates on any airline anytime. What's in your wallet? Oh, I got a couple bucks, bus pass. Not you. I was cooking dinner and I just fell asleep. <coughs> I tried to get out, but, but I collapsed. I couldn't call for help. But ADT did. They saved my life. An ADT monitored fire detector actually signals ADT so we can call for help. Call now and you may qualify to get an ADT system installed for zero down. Call today. Create your own holiday feast at Red Lobster. Combine two or three of your seafood favorites from 11 signature dishes, including our tender snow crab. Turn a meal into a celebration at Red Lobster. Drinks before lunch? Uh, water's fine for me. Uh, water for me too, but with lemon, please. I'll have a Sam Adams, please. Mm. Make that two Sam Adams. Samuel Adams, always a good decision. Cool tattoo. Thanks. It means fiery strength. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, it means of two men who love each other. You are the one who plays the woman. Committed premieres NBC Tuesday. Shadows deepening around Altel Stadium in Jacksonville. Fourth quarter, 425 left after the interception in the end zone. West Virginia takes over at the 20. Trailing Florida State and a run to K.J. Harris. And K.J. with a flag now. <laughs> is ridden out of bounds after gaining about 11 yards by Alex Boston. We'll get to the flag in a moment, but you, have, you still can't answer the question why still, this ball was still thrown, thinking, right? Still thinking. Okay, still thinking. He's going to try to force the ball here, Chris Ricks. I think they thought they were going to have a wide open play, a quick pump fake. It wasn't bitten on by the defensive back. Now throw it away. 
You, you know, you're up by 12 points, four minutes remaining in the game, and it was first down. That was just a real bad decision by Chris Ricks. Dan Moses of West Virginia, the left guard, was guilty of a hold, which puts the Mountaineers now back to their own 16-yard line. You know, I'm not even sure that they should even call the pass play. Just, right. just run the ball. They've, they've, Leon Washington has been running it you know, great. They, uh, the fault lies in yeah. calling the pass play yeah. as far as that's concerned. West Virginia, three timeouts left. Are you surprised they haven't gone to their jet? Jet, absolutely. The two-minute offense is basically their regular offense. Marshall right into his own man. Stops short of the 30-yard line. Now he's got very good speed. Nicky Andrews, the defensive coordinator, said to us last week, he's still see how he's having trouble getting up. Boy, said, you know, you watch him, he just runs away from people. Wow. 12-yard gain, still second down, then two. And they are not in their jet. Clock rolls. Hand off to Colson, Jason Colson. Didn't get the first down and precious seconds ticking away. They actually, I guess, were in the jet because they snapped it with only a couple of seconds expired off the play clock. But yeah, but yeah down by 12, you yeah. gotta be you gotta be hurling the ball down field, right? right? Snap it now. In fact, Florida State wasn't even completely off the field. That should, and I don't see yeah. a flag. Yeah, they're good. They got, they got the first. Stops the clock. Florida State was still in the midst of changing lineups, changing defensive players when they snapped the ball. Some of the players weren't completely off the field, but no flag call. Should have been uh, too many men on the field, I believe. And those of you that have tuned in for skating, it'll be coming up after the Toyota Gator Bowl. Brian Boitano, one of his guests, Christy Yamaguchi. As I said to Pat earlier, uh, both Brian and Christy were a pair of my favorite skaters of all time as they finished their amateur careers and turned professional. They still didn't slack off. They still were working as complete, absolute professionals, trying, uh, still trying the hard moves and maintaining that uh, professionalism, not oh, mailing it in. Defense, the 12th man never got off the field. Five yard penalty. The penalty results in the first down. And I see Charles, uh, yeah, Charles Hale. Hale is in at quarterback now, the backup quarterback who's, who's caught a pass today. He's thrown some blocks. There's Hales replacing the injured Rashid Marshall, who looked really bad as he got up that last time yeah. off that last hit. For the season, Hales hit three of his six passes. 47 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Carried six times and caught five passes in the regular season and just had one today. That snap just about. Oh, my goodness. This is a incomplete pass, they call it. Incomplete pass. That was a comedy of errors as the snap just about knocked Hales backwards. Guess what? Penalty. That ought to be penalized for just general ugliness. <laughs> I think he threw the ball into the stands. Um, and, uh, Meanwhile, Rashid Marshall boy. in pain. So, heaving the ball into the stands, celebrating a non-TD. As... Play on the field is ruled an incomplete pass. After the play was ruled dead. A.J. Nicholson. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you're right, they didn't even score. <laughs> you know, they should take a year of eligibility away, too. <laughs> Boy. Was that a laser snap or what? It just I, yeah. about knocked Hales backwards. And then Nicholson. And heaves it into the stands. I wonder what the record for penalties is in the Gator Bowl. It's, it's been exceeded. I'm sure it's been broken. Tipped pass, and this one is intercepted. Pikion, Ray Pikion, the senior linebacker from Miami. 
with the interception to put up here and another flag. Fittingly enough, if the game can't end on a penalty, we could be here till dusk. Taunting, number 56, Florida State. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, pretty good protection for Hills. Just, a, you know, the defensive lineman gets his hand up. I think it was Bunkley, number 52, tipped the ball. Mm -hmm. And Pekion is there to make an easy interception. There it is. Served up. You know, there are those, Pat, that say, you know, a team that has too many penalties, that's a sign of coaching. Uh, you know, wouldn't you agree with that? Well, and it's happened all year. This is not an uncommon event. We saw the statistic earlier. Both teams ranked, I think one was 96, one was 99th in terms of penalties against out of 117 teams per uh, in, the, in Division 1A. And a lot of them really, really stupid penalties, too. Not execution penalties. This one has uh, been out of hand in the penalty department for a long time. You know, Rich Rodriguez, I think, is going to be disappointed on a couple fronts. I mean, his quarterback was hurt and obviously lose the ball game. But the way they lost it, too, you know, with a lot of these penalties, Florida State even had more. You know, a guy who's, uh, as we said, been successful, won 25 games over the last three years. But, boy, had, had, had their moments, had an opportunity today against the Florida State team that just turned it over and about two zillion penalties. It has to be a, a bittersweet moment, too, for Chris Ricks, doesn't it? Indeed. As his yeah. uh, Florida State career comes to a close, he's going to go out on a winning note and made some nice plays today. He made some not so nice, which is pretty much sums up his career with uh, the Seminoles, the quarterback that Florida State fans love to hate. You know, I just remember the play that he made toward the end of the game of the Florida game a few weeks ago that was just to, just staggering how good it was. I mean, he has just such immense talent. But perhaps the last play, the last throw he's going to make as a Seminole was the last one we saw a few moments ago. All right. West Virginia calls timeout. Washington set the tone early. Yeah, one of the guys over the 100-yard mark. Leon Washington closing in on 200. Lorenzo Booker over 100. And K.J. Harris for West Virginia over 100. So he had three of them. Both those guys back for the Seminoles next season. And West Virginia just can't get over the hump at bowl time, can they? Mm -hmm. No. You know, I just wonder how disappointed they were. They lose the last yeah. year, eight and one at one point, looking at winning the Big East, going to the BCS bowl game, and then just kind of collapsed at the end of the year. It's a couple of tough losses. This is Lewis, Lamar Lewis, freshman running back from here in Jacksonville. The combined. Washington and Booker averaged almost 10 yards a carry today. And a timeout taken again by the Mountaineers. And coming to NBC, a new Super Sunday tradition for the first time ever. The eight best poker superstars are together at one table with a record $400,000 buy-in. Watch as these Master Cardsmen match wits until there's only one left standing at the Poker Superstars Championship, Sunday, February the 6th, here on NBC. Does the full house beat three of a kind? I'll explain that to you. I'll let me get you in a game. And see. Let me get be you careful. in a game. The guy says that, be careful, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a guy who's gambled some over the years. Remember, they used to call him King of the Road. That's right. He'd take his team on the road. You know, he would take on all comers. When he first started in Florida State, he'd, he'd go anywhere yep. and beat a lot of people. When he had his uh, team on the move. And master of the bowl games, too. The Seminoles in a total of uh, 33 bowl games. This punt into the end zone for the touchback. And this will be his, what, 19th bowl win for Bobby Barron. Uh, 
Rolls into the end. And unbeaten in the Gator. 23rd straight year they've been to a bowl game. And uh, 19 wins for Coach Bowden against eight losses and one tie. You know, I just don't think you're ever going to see a guy last a long, as long no. at a university as he has. In fact, and, yeah. Coach Rodriguez said the same Absolutely. thing, didn't he? Because the landscape yeah. of college football has changed so much. You have three years nowadays. If you go, don't get a program turned around in three years and get your kind of recruits in, you're gone. That's just uh, the nature of the game today. Well, it's become a multi-million dollar business, and that increases the pressure. Coaches make more money, but pressure to perform. Hales with a quarterback draw. Hales the heir apparent. Uh, when Marshall was injured, figured to be the man to step in. And caught a touchdown pass against Syracuse this year and started last year against Boston College where he threw for three touchdown passes. He's got a really strong arm. We were talking to some of his teammates yesterday saying, you know, he can, kneeling down, he can throw the ball about 65 yards. Huh. Transfer from Jones County Junior College in Mississippi. He's a native of Mississippi, Ellisville, Mississippi. Do you think that uh, Chris Henry and Pac-Man Jones have played their final games yes. in the Mountaineers? I think Chris Henry certainly has. I'm not sure you'd let him back, would you? Right. But I think he's going to the NFL. I think Pac-Man Jones is going to make his decision next week. Wow. Deep pass caught by Bolden. There you saw the strength in Charles Hale's arm. Bolden makes the catch. Lost the tackle for Florida State after 49 yards. Inside the final minute, 49 seconds on the clock. Stranger things have happened. Uh, still, the, the, the two missed extra points really, you know, yeah. prevent you from any legitimate chance, I believe. Clock stopped as Florida State takes the timeout. Just talked about how some of his teammates, Hills, his teammates were saying, "Hey, what a how strong his arm is!" He kind of winds up and and throws this thing. I don't know, a good 55, 60 yards, frozen rope, right on the numbers to Bolden. You got to say when you when you have a, a quarterback with a strong arm here inside the 15 yard line is I think when you really need that strong arm because the spaces get so tight that the throws have to be a lot. Harder and faster. And that's where a guy like uh, Charles Hales can can help you down here. Skating coming up next. Did he have a move, a favorite uh, jump, or baton, or Yamaguchi that you're talking about? You know, they, they had a a wide repertoire, of course. But still, what was impressing me that was they were still attempting triple jumps, yeah, yeah. which you don't see professional skaters attempt too much. Even after their amateur careers were over, they were still attempting uh, triple jumps, which is uh, a rarity. And you might be, you know, that, that takes a really young body. But uh, up until a few years ago, that was uh, still in their repertoire. And I admired them for still performing at that high level. Here's another fly. <laughs> Any chance of a triple drum from you in 2005? Any, uh... Might be a triple fall. You know, Brian McFadden on that play for Florida State. We saw him get injured a little bit earlier. What, what a good year he's had. And, you know, he said he's going to he graduated. He said it's when he, about a year ago. The proudest moment that he's going to have is walking across the stage to get his diploma. Computer graphics major. Defense. The ball will be stayed at the spot of the foul. First down at the two-yard line. 41 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Hales pumps once, fires incomplete. Through the hands of Ray Bolden. 
Second and goal from the two. You know, even though you're trying to score so quickly, K.J. Harris has had such a good day running the football. Boy, a time, a, a, a chance to give him one more little inside run. Huh? A long set back. And the two, Harris. Away to go. That's why they didn't. <laughs> Fire me as offensive coordinator. <laughs> we said it was tough to run against these guys. They finally really kind of stiffened up, didn't they? They did, and the Florida yeah. State to offense came alive in the second half, led by Chris Ricks. No flags, Tom. Uh, no, but a timeout. Yeah. Chris Ricks, after the shaky first half for the Seminoles, hit 9 of 12 during two second-half touchdown drives and helped along by 200-yard rushers. In fact, Washington nearly 200 yards. Well, and West Virginia with plenty of missed opportunities, huh? Yeah, a lot of mistakes. You know, a 12-point game, but boy, there's the fumble on the kickoff return by Pac-Man Jones. And fumble snap by K.J. Harris, or handoff, I should say. Ball tipped, and then a real nice interception by A.J. Nicholson. So that's three there, right? There's the fourth. Combined now with a couple of missed extra points, and uh, you know it's really amazing considering that this 12-point game was told you West Virginia's defense has played pretty doggone well. Missed extra points on the first two touchdowns by two different kickers. West Virginia has expended its final timeouts with 30 seconds on the clock. Chris Ricks leaves a winner at Florida State. Well, they're going to think about a quick score and onside kick down by 12. Third down and goal from the seven yard line. Hales into the stands. You know, in the, in the AFL, you get to keep those balls. Here at the end, we have to throw them back. Well, let's wait and see if he does. Let's see. No chance. He's, no, he's, yeah, he's good for him. Good for him. Maybe going up after him. He's trying to hide it now. Yeah, good, good idea. <laughs> I don't have it. I don't have it. What ball? Whoops. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. The daughter is yeah, the honest one. Yeah. <laughs> Just like one, one like that in every family, the honest one. <laughs> Fourth down play, last chance for West Virginia. Hales is flying down, by the way. Incomplete. Mikel Henderson was, Mickey Andrews says decline it. It's getting late. Chop block, number 52 offense. That penalty refused. First down, Florida State. All right, mercifully now, Florida State could just take a knee. <laughs> Would hope. He didn't look terribly satisfied. Did no, it? well, yeah. you know, coaches never are. are yeah. There's always something that didn't go right. Didn't work. gives you something to talk about later. Something to motivate your team for the next season. Take a knee, and that should be it. Chris Ricks with a celebratory hoisting of the football toward the heavens and a heave into the stands. As his final game as a Seminole goes into the books as a Gator Bowl win. Final seconds tick away. Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles taking command of the game in the second half to pull away from West Virginia and win it by a final score of 30 to 18. Great respect between the coaches, Rodriguez of West Virginia and Bowden of Florida State. Once again, final score from the 2005 Toyota Gator Bowl, Florida State 30 and West Virginia 18.
Coming up next here on NBC, it's AFLAC presents Brian Boitano's Holiday Skating Spectacular with special guests Christy Yamaguchi and Carly Patterson. So for Pat Hayden and Lewis Johnson, this is Tom Hammond saying so long from Jacksonville. Happy New Year, everybody. Eight loving couples will compete for one million bucks. No. Fear Factor Couples, NBC Monday at 8, 7 Central. Get into the holiday spirit at your Chevy Network dealers with great deals on the biggest lineup on the road. Check out your Cleveland area newspapers for this $500 holiday bonus cash coupon. Combine it with most current factory offers to lease or buy a Chevy Malibu, Impala, Trailblazer, and Trailblazer EXT. But use it by January 3rd or you lose it. Hurry to your participating Chevy Network dealer. Because this offer ends January 3rd. This red tag is your key to extraordinary year-end savings. Get into your GMC dealer by January 3rd for special red tag offers on the power, precision, and design of select professional-grade GMC trucks and SUVs. Lease an 05 Envoy four-wheel drive SLE for around $335 a month. Call for residency restrictions and lease details. Through January 3rd, see some red, save some green at your participating Northern Ohio GMC dealers. Get into the holiday spirit at your Chevy Network dealers with great deals on the biggest lineup on the road. Check out your Cleveland area newspapers for this $500 holiday bonus cash coupon. Combine it with most current factory offers to lease or buy a Chevy Malibu, Impala, Trailblazer, and Trailblazer EXT. But use it by January 3rd or you lose it. Hurry to your participating Chevy Network dealer because this offer ends January 3rd. Ramona Robinson and Tim White, Channel 3 News. Welcome to Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, where we are saluting the great entertainment era that made Las Vegas what it is today. I got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got that string around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love I got a song that I sing I can make the rain go Anytime I move my finger Lucky me Can't you see I'm in love Life is a beautiful thing As long as I hold that string I'd be a silly so-and-so If I should ever let it go I got the world on a string, sitting on a rainbow, got that string around my finger, what a world, what a life I'm in love. Mr. Brian Boitano.